Hey guys, this is Robert with Liquid Creations. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be working on uh, a dinner table that's now it's starting to crack. It's showing its wear and stuff like that. But let me show you what I had to do in order to get to where I could do anything with epoxy. You know, you guys have seen in my previous videos that I had a workshop that I had built and I was comfortable in it and anyway long story short the landlord that I was renting the house from decided he wanted to sell the house and I didn't have the money to uh, have the shed moved so or it wasn't a shed it was a workshop it was a big one 20 foot by 20 foot and I didn't have the money to have it moved but anyway where I moved to I had to make me a little make a shift pour area out back so I could do pretty much anything with epoxy I mean if I wanted to, I could, I got, I had to do what I had to do. Anyway, let me show you what I put together. Don't criticize me for it. It is what it is. It'll work. It's, it's until I could buy me something or move and build something else. Anyway, let me take you back there and show you. Every time I get ready to do something or want to do something or need to do something with epoxy, this is what I got to do every time. Got to get in my car I've got to drive eight miles to my storage unit just to get things that I need and maybe some things that I don't need but I might need you know what I'm saying so it's a process especially when I have to go down a toll road for Four or three of them eight miles so I mean I've got to figure something out I don't know what it's gonna be but you bet your bottom dollar I'm gonna figure something out there's stuff straight everywhere in storage and there's a few other things besides tools but for the most part it's tools and wood so anyway I'll see you guys when I get storage. In just a second for you, it'll be probably 45 minutes for me. So stand by. All right, guys, and here we are at my storage. I want you to look at this freaking mess I have. Look, crap everywhere, man. I can't stand it. I ain't got much wood. That's all the wood I have left in here. Got a couple boxes of pigment powder. All my epoxy. One of my sinks. All my tools. Anyway, I'm going to get what I need here and try to get some things that I might need but I don't right now if you know what I mean so I don't have to come back because it is a quite a long hectic ride and it costs me money every time I come here sorry about the lighting my apologies but yeah let me uh, get what I need here and we'll get to the house and we'll finish this table I right, see you guys there alright guys here it is I know it's a hut at best, but it's what I had to do. You can see I just built a frame and I wrapped it in a 9mm visqueen. I mean, it'll keep the stuff from the trees off of me and stuff like that. But as far as staying in here, this is just a temporary thing. But this is the table that I'm going to be working on. Let me show you what I'm talking about. You can see things like that right there. You see how it's it's separating along right here. And then there's a hump of epoxy right there. It's just and you can if you look oh yeah you can see daylight through there. See it? And there's actually no uh, epoxy in that crack. So what I'm going to do 
I'm going to take a grind, side grinder, angle grinder, and I'm going to grind. I might use that, or I'll use a knife. I'm not sure yet. I'm going to clean all these cracks out, sand it down smooth because it is in no way smooth. It's just, it's showing its wear. Like you can see that crack there. And you can see how the epoxy is just coming apart. Anyway, let me uh, get the camera set up on the tripod and we'll get to cleaning up this tabletop and then we'll move on to epoxy. All right, guys. I've got it somewhat situated to where I can work on it. I'm just going to take my pocket knife and go down this center seam and dig out any of that crap that might be in there. You want all that old crap out of there. You want no trash. I apologize for that AC if you guys hear it. And I apologize if I get in the way of you guys seeing. I don't want to cut the wood or nothing like that. I just want to get that old gadget edge of epoxy where it's cracked. I just want to get rid of that. That's all I'm going for here. And if there's any trash or stuff that's been crammed down in there, I don't want to get rid of that. I hate having to make a video out here like this and not in a proper work environment. But right now I don't have no choice. And come hell or high water. I'm getting a video out. If this is what I gotta do for a little while, well, this is what I gotta do. All right, I'm gonna uh, plug my orbitable sander in. I'm gonna use 100 grit paper on this and see if we can get it down smooth. All right, guys, I'm just gonna go crazy on this thing and start sanding it down. I'm using my orbitable sander and I got 100 grit uh, paper on it. I'm going to see if we can get it down some to where I can get this roughness out. That way when we do pour it, it'll be nice and smooth. Once I do this sanding and these cracks that go through, I'm going to seal them. That way the epoxy will be able to fill these gaps up and bond them two pieces of wood together even better. That's my plan anyway. One thing I'm going to want to do, I'm going to want to be careful. I don't want to burn all the way through the existing epoxy. I don't want to mess up the stain they have on this uh, wood. So like right here on the edges, right here, I'll take and do all that by hand. All the rounded edges and stuff, the corners, all that gets done by hand. The flat areas is what's going to get the paper. And this is going to take a while, so I won't make you guys suffer through the whole video of me doing this. I'll get started with it on video, then I'll finish it, then I'll come back when I'm done. You guys get the idea of what I'm talking about here.
Alright guys, I'm gonna turn this camera off for a minute so I can sand it heavy. That way the dust don't get all over the lens. And when I get that done, I'll bring you back, show you what I've done, and we'll go from there. Stand by just a minute. It won't take a second for you. All right, I've got it all sanded once. It's going to need to be sanded some more. There's a couple spots I burnt through the epoxy down to the wood. But I have the matching stain to take care of these spots. You can see all the low spots of little imperfections when it was first poured I'm gonna get it all smooth for the most part and uh, once I do that I'll give it a good coat a good flood coat so what I'm gonna do with these cracks I'm gonna fill this with quick set epoxy all these cracks I'm gonna fill with quick set epoxy that way our flood coat won't won't run out the uh, bottom side so here's a bad crack right here look at this I still gotta clean them out some too so this one in this center seam right here is the worst one for the most part like, like here on the edge there's a few but these don't go all the way all the way through I'm sorry these are just uh, where the epoxy has cracked that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna try to get down in there get all this old rough stuff out that way when I use the quick set I poured in there too and it'll cause this piece of wood and this piece of wood to bond together so that's the plan anyway all right I'm gonna sand it again lightly sand it again that way it uh, I'm trying to get it as smooth as possible it's hot out here too especially in this black box that I've had to create in order to do this if you get anything out of these videos by the way why don't you give it a thumbs up hit the subscribe button and the little bell so you get notified when my videos do come out oh and don't forget to leave a comment he left me a comment one day what was it I don't know you tell me I don't know what it was. anyway that's the fruit of my loins Yeah, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think so far of it. How you would do something different, if anything different. Oh, that light's bright. I need that though. It's good for video. All right, let me get it up on the tripod and we'll get to the next step. Stand by just a second. All right, guys, here we go. It's time to pour this table. I'm going to be using... Well, actually, we're going to be using Wise Bond Bar and Tabletop Epoxy. This is some of the best epoxy I've ever used. There will be a link in the description below for this epoxy. If you follow that link and if you was to purchase anything on their website off of that link that I'm providing you're also going to get a, I'm going to leave you a discount code of 10% so if you get anything through that link you apply that discount code at checkout which the code is Kellogg 10 K-E-L-L-O-G-G -G 1 0 if you use that code at checkout you'll get you uh, an additional 10% off of your purchase which it's already has a good price it really does and I'm gonna mix up a little more than I need for some of these seams right here so they'll they'll fill up 
so I'll start with my hardener. The reason I do that is it's thinner and it lays out flat faster in your mixing container. And I'll show you why in just a minute. Yes, I'm mixing more than I need, I know. You want to make sure your work surface is level when you're doing this. Because if you don't, your epoxy is going to find the lowest point and it's going to go to it. That's why you want to make sure it's good and level. Don't drip none of this on the uh, work surface because if you do, it's going to uh, create a sticky spot. Now, the reason I pour my hardener in first, it's real thin and it lays out flat in this mixing container where your actual resin is a lot thicker. It'll sink up under the hardener and sink down to the bottom. And as it rises, this top's going to stay level. It'll give you a true reading. See how much thicker it is? I'm going to have to get more resin. I don't have enough. I might have enough. Let me see what this is going to do. Yeah, I had to get a little more resin. I didn't have quite enough in this container. Like I said, make sure you don't drip this on your work surface. shouldn't take a whole lot more that's it right there now if you're mixing see I got a little bit right there you gotta make sure you get that off if you're going to be mixing with a paddle, container this size, I would mix for three to five minutes. Make sure you hang on to this mixing container because if you don't, this epoxy is so thick, it'll grab the container and try to twist it with your uh, paddle. <clears throat> down there for a second take your mixing stick scrape the sides and the bottom very well that way you get all that unmixed epoxy out to where it can be mixed up with the rest of it You want to scrape the bottom really well too because there's all kind of unmixed epoxy that sticks to the sides and the bottom. Give it a good mix to make sure it's all out in the middle. And you'll be able to see the unmixed epoxy that you scrape off the side when you do this look like waves in the epoxy. Now you want to scrape your stick off. You want to get your paddle again. And you're going to want to mix it for an additional two minutes.
left to do is to pour it out. So let's do it. I'm going to start in the center. I ain't going to pour quite all of it out yet. Fill in these voids. I don't want it going over the edge just yet. So I get the top covered, then I'll get it out over my edges. But I want to make sure the top is covered really, really well. That way them voids that were there will get filled up. See it's pretty thick out here so I'll get me some. side. I'm not taking too much from the top because I want to keep as much as I can up there right now. So it'll take care of them voids and the table's not perfectly flat up there. And it didn't quite flatten it out so I apologize for the AC. I got a crack over here that's really soaking it up. It's hot out here today, guys. It sure is. I'm going to get my torch and pop some of these bubbles. I'm going to take my brush real quick. Get some epoxy on it. I'm going to brush these sides out real good.
see this void down here. So really trying to soak it up. Just want to keep an eye on them voids. Because they will. They'll eat some epoxy up. Let me put that brush right there for a minute. And I'm going to torch it to bust the bubbles. more right here to this seam that seems to be eating my epoxy up. Alright guys, I'm going to leave it alone how it sits for right now. I'm going to let that center seam soak up as much epoxy as it wants to. And then the, while the rest of it cures. And then I'll come back. I'll make another video and show you how I'm going to seal the remaining little bit of that center seam that is being hard-headed for some reason and I wasn't able to get it on the first go around I thought I did but I didn't I'll show you how to take care of that center seam this flood code right here showed me where all the seams were that were leaking I thought I had got them sealed up but apparently I didn't and I'll show you how to take care of that problem from up top so be on the lookout for that other video all right, guys, if you guys get any value out of any of these videos, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't done it yet, hit that subscribe button down and get yourself subscribed so you'll know when the next video comes out or any video for that matter. And comment. If you know a better way or if you would have done something different, leave me a comment. Let me know what you know would be, how you would have done it different. Or if you have a question, leave it. But when you do, if you have a question, put the word question first in capital letters. That way I know you have a question. I normally answer every single comment, every one. That way, if somebody else in the comments sees that somebody has a question, they can respond to it and answer it. And that's how the communication thing works out. But, uh, yeah, and... The epoxy that I'm using, like I said, is Wise Bond. There'll be a link in the description with a 10% discount code, which is Kellogg10, K-E-L-L-O-G-G-1-0. -G you apply that discount code at checkout for whatever you buy through that link, and you'll get an additional 10% off, which is a very good deal. Look, and the epoxy, it's, I think it's for a one-gallon kit. If I'm not mistaken, it's $68, which you're not going to find that nowhere. And I don't care what anybody tells me, that's one of the best epoxies that I've used. And I've used a bunch of different ones. There is a bunch of good ones out there, but I think this one has one of the best work times. And it just lays out glass smooth. I mean, trust me, you'll love it. Anyway thumbs up if I've earned it please hit the subscribe button down here I believe it's in your lower right hand corner of your screen there's a little red thing that says subscribe hit it get yourself subscribed I would appreciate it and leave a comment that helps the channel out just as good as a thumbs up does so please alright guys I appreciate you watching stay tuned for the next one on this table love you guys Bye-bye.